Okay, we'll continue our discussion with who bears the loss or who is at risk of loss or who bears the risk when things get lost. So these things are contributed to the partnership. So first, when it involves specific and determined things which are not fungible, then it is contributed to the partnership. So the one who bears the loss is the partner. This specific thing, by the way, is not uh, transferred in the name of the partnership. No? So what is uh, what benefits the partnership is only using that property. So it's specified here where only use is contributed. So that is known as the use, which is the use of rock. No? So the partnership only uses the thing, but the ownership still remains with the partner. So if ever the thing is lost, then it is borne by the partner. Number two, when specific and determined things, then the ownership of which is transferred to the partnership. So this time it is transferred. So if, obviously if the thing is lost, then it is the partnership who bears the loss. Number three, when it involves fungible things, what are fungible things? These are consumable things or things which cannot be kept without deterioration, without deteriorating. So it deteriorates meaning its value is uh, diminished on the Gamayang value. So the risk is borne by the partnership. So fungible things are consumable things. Or number four, when things contributed are intended to be sold. So this time it's the, it is the partner who bears the loss if ever these items are lost. Numbers, number five, when things brought and appraised are included in the inventory. So what is inventory? Inventory are things which are uh, property of the partnership which are to be sold. No? So it's the same as this one, the things contributed to be sold, it is also the partnership who bears the loss. Then uh, fruits of specific and determined things which are not fungible, like this uh, first one, where only use is contributed, then it is the partner who bears the loss. These are all in, embodied in Article 1795 of the Civil Code. So let's go to the rules for contribution of profits and losses, stated in Article 1797 of the Civil Code. So profits or losses are divided. The general rule, if there is agreement here, number one, with agreement, then profits and losses are divided in accordance with the agreement. Okay, it's very clear here. Now, there is a problem when there is no agreement. So the first rule is to share the capital, share of capitalist partner is in proportion to his capital contribution. So it will be based on the contribution. The share of the industrial partner is not fixed. So the industrial partner will receive just an equitable, equitable share under the circumstances, meaning the share of the profits. No? So again, if without agreement, then the capitalist partner's share in the profits is in proportion to his capital contribution. So pila yang namot, based, it will be based there. But however, in the case of industrial partners, since he has no capital contribution, so he will receive share of profits, which is just and equitable under the circumstances. Now, in case of loss, if there's no agreement how losses are to be divided, 
then it should be number one it should be uh, uh first one if there is agreed sharing of profit it should not be without agreement so number one if there is agreed sharing of profit then the losses will also be shared in accordance with the sharing of profits okay this is number one so this is not in line here so it goes here losses okay this is the same as this one according to agreement so if sharing profit is stipulated according to agreement so number one here okay if there is no sharing of profit in the articles of partnership then losses shall be borne according to capital contribution, meaning it will be based on the in proportion to their capital contribution. So if they are not contributing equally, so it should be prorated based on their capital contribution. This is uh, this pertains to capitalist partners. However, in industrial partner who is purely industrial for that matter, he is not liable for losses. In Article 1799, if there's an agreement or a stipulation which excludes one or more partners from any share in the profits and losses, this stipulation or this provision is void, meaning it has no legal effect. No? Now let's discuss the rights and obligations of partners with respect to management or managing the partnership. In the first case, if a partner is appointed manager in the articles of partnership. So the articles of partnership is the uh, agreement no? or the contract of the partners. So in the contract, it is stated that partner A or partner Juan de la Cruz will manage the partnership. It's stated in the contract. So if it's stated in the contract, this power of the managing partner is irrevocable, meaning it cannot be revoked. Even with, uh, it cannot be revoked. It can only be revoked when there is just if there is just or lawful causes, no? And revocable only when in bad faith. When he is uh, he's not in good faith. He has bad intention towards the partnership and to his partners. So how to revoke such power? The, the partners representing controlling interest may vote in order to revoke his power. So, kailangan o vote. So, there's a vote necessary to repel the power of a managing partner who is appointed in the Articles of Partnership. Okay? So, this one is very hard to uh, reject or uh, remove. So, the, first, the second case is when a partner is appointed manager, but only after the constitution of the articles of partnership so there is already an articles of partnership then they appointed a partner so if the name of the managing partner is not stated in the articles so if it's not stated then this power is revocable anytime even for any cause okay any causes can be revoked even uh, Okay. Another scenario when there are two or more persons or partners who are interested with managing the partnership and there is no specification as to their specific as to their duties or the stipulate uh, their stipulation that each shall not act without the other's consent. No? So there are two partners managing the partnership and there's no stipulation as to their specific uh, decision making process so what is now the effect each may execute all acts of administration so they can 
they can act on their own, you know. But in case of opposition, if one opposes the other, then the decision of majority shall prevail. So the other partners will have to go. So in case of tie, decision of partners, owning controlling interest shall prevail. So those who own controlling interest, meaning 51% uh, interests of the partnership. Another scenario when it, the managing of the partner is stipulated that none of the managing partners shall act without the consent of others. So here there is an agreement that in case there are two or more partners who manage, who manage, who will manage the partnership and one cannot act without the consent of the other. So they shall uh, decide without the act of the other. So it is required that concurrence of all necessary for the validity of acts. Meaning all of them should decide in order that an action or decision will be valid. An absence or disability of anyone cannot be alleged unless there is imminent danger or grave or irreparable injury to partnership. So in case there is one absent or one is disabled, so it cannot be alleged, meaning they cannot just say, hey, uh, we will just put it there that he is disabled and he cannot render his decision. No, it cannot be done. So unless there is imminent danger of grave or irreparable injury to the partnership, no? Imminent meaning soon to happen, and then grave or irreparable meaning it cannot be repaired. No, when this injury to the partnership will happen. And then, if uh, lastly, if the management manner of uh, managing is not agreed upon, so there is no agreement as to who, who will manage or how the partnership shall be managed then this will be decided uh, by the doctrine of mutual agency. Now, there's no stipulation in case I manage. So meaning, all partners are managers. So all partners are <coughs> agents to the partnership and the unanimous consent required for alteration of immovable property. So in case of real property is involved and uh, major alteration, then all of them must consent. So if refusal of partner is manifestly prejudicial to interest of partnership, then the court will have to intervene, intervene, intervene in order that the, the decision will pursue, will be pursued. So those are the different scenarios in the managing of a partner's business. Now we go to the other rights and obligations of partners. So a partner has the right to associate another person with him in his share without consenting to the other partners. So if you are a partner and you want to share your, uh, you want to share your interest or profits to another person who is not a partner, and that's what you call sub-partnership. And it is without the consent of the other partners. No? When it's other partners and you're sharing your profit or interest to another person, that is called sub-partnership. Sub Number two, a partner has the right to inspect and copy partnership books at any reasonable hour. So these books we are referring to is, are the books of accounts, yeah? accounting books. Number three, right to a formal account as to partnership affairs. So even during existence of the partnership. So if there's a specific transaction, partner can, uh, the, can demand for a formal accounting. This happens if he is wrongfully excluded from partnership business or possession 
So, ni-exclude siya, no? Wrongfully. Letter B, if right exists under the terms of any agreement. So, this right to right to formal agreement is stated in the articles. Letter C, whenever other circumstances render just and reasonable. Okay. Other right of a partner, it is the duty to render on demand true and full information affecting partnership to any partner or legal representative in case of a deceased partner or of any partner under legal disability. So this partner is under legal disability, meaning he is in prison in, in prison for more than six years. Number five, duty to account to the partnership as a fiduciary. Fiduciary is a trustee. Okay. So let's go to property rights of a partner. So question, what are the property rights of a partner? The answer is, uh, there are three answers. His rights in specific partnership property. Number two, his interest in the partnership. And number three, his right to participate in the management. Okay. So nature of partner's right in specific partnership property. So this is specific. A partner has equal right to possess, which is not assignable. Dilemma transferred, no? And such right is limited to the share of what remains after partnership debts have been paid. So if ever there is a building that is owned by the partnership and there are three partners in that partnership, so that building is owned by three persons, no? And this ownership is cannot be transferred. No? So when can this ownership be transferred? It can only be transferred if all the other partners will, all, will also transfer their share. No? So, so building, again, building is owned by three persons because there are three partners in the uh, business. Then that ownership cannot, is, uh, will, cannot be transferred to another person. So the nature of partner's right in the partnership is his share in the profits and surplus. So profits is computed by uh, subtracting income from, subtracting expenses from income. So income minus expenses equals profits. While, while surplus is obtained by subtracting liabilities from assets. So if you subtract assets, uh, liabilities from assets or assets minus liabilities <coughs> equals surplus. So profits can be found in the profit and loss statement while surplus can be found in the uh, balance sheet. Okay. Now we discuss the obligation of partner with regard to third persons or creditor. First obligation is every partnership shall operate under a firm name and then persons who include their names in a partnership name, even if they are not members or not partner, he shall be liable as a partner. Yeah? So if you include your name in the partnership and you are not a partner, if ever that partnership will uh, will experience losses, cannot pay uh, its debts, then you will be made liable uh, from your personal assets. Number two, all partners shall be liable for contractual obligations of the partnership with their property after all partnership assets have been exhausted. So either pro rata or subsidiarily. So pro rata meaning proportionate or subsidiarily meaning after all the assets have been exhausted, then comes 
your personal or the partner's personal assets. So, gukuro na ilang personal assets. Number three, admission or presentation made by any partner concerning partnership affairs within scope of his authority is evidence against the partnership. Okay. So, you have to be careful for your admission or representation to other persons when that admission or presentation will jeopardize the partnership. Number four, notice the partner of any matter relating to partnership affairs operates as notice to the partnership. In case of fraud, so letter A, knowledge of partner acting the particular matter acquired while being a partner. Knowledge of partner acting in a particular matter when present to his mind. The knowledge of any other partner who reasonably could and should have communicated it to the acting partner. So when this knowledge of, when this notice comes to the knowledge of a partner in any of these uh, situations here, then that is already notice to other uh, partners. No? Number five, partners and the partnership are solidarily or solidarily liable to third persons for the partner's tort or breach of trust. So, what do you mean by tort? This is negligence, no? When a partner commits negligence, then the other partners and the partnership will be solidarily liable to third persons or breach of trust, okay? This is a violation of trust. Number six, liability of incoming partner. So if there's a new partner that's coming into the partnership, so rule number one, his share in the partnership property for existing obligations. So for any existing obligation, he has no meaning the partnership has existing debts, na utang daan, pagsuod niya, then he will not be liable, but only the partnership property will be liable. But in case uh, the partnership has subsequent obligations or debts, then his separate property will be made liable. Na? Meaning his personal property. When will this happen? When the partnership will uh, be insolvent and all of its assets are already exhausted and can no longer pay its debts. No? So, gukuro na yang separate property. It's a new partner. Number seven, creditors of partnership are given preference in partnership property and may attach partners' share in partnership assets. So in the sharing of uh, dissolution of property, the creditors are given a preference. Number eight, every partner is an agent of the partnership. <clears throat> so all the partners are agents of the partnership. This is the mutual agency doctrine. So in some instances, there is what you call partner by stoppel. So when is a person considered a partner by stoppel? It's by his words or conduct. And he does the following. Number one, he directly represents himself to anyone as a partner in an existing partnership or even in a non-existing partnership. So he comes in and he introduces himself as a partner to the partnership, even though he's not. So, or even though when there is no partnership, he still introduces that there's a partnership and he is one of the partners. So that's a partner by Stoppel. Or number two, when he indirectly represents himself by consenting to another representing him as a partner in an existing partnership or in a non-existing partnership. So when somebody represents himself 
uh, another person and he consents to this person. Sige. And then he call it down ako. Sige, ta partner. Then he is already a partner by his topel. So these are the elements to establish liability as a partner on the ground of estoppel. So the partner who is guilty of estoppel or misrepresentation, so he's now the defendant of the case. So defendant meaning he's the person who is sued in the court. So the defendant represented himself as partner or he represented others as they are partners and he did, he did not deny or did not refute this representation or false representation he made. Yeah. So there's a false representation and he did not deny or refute. Number two, the plaintiff relied on such representation. So Aninkiha or the plaintiff has relied or has believed no? that this person is truly making a true that this person is making a true representation wala na makak para sa iya and number 3 the statement of defendant not refuted so the whatever statement the the defendant or kutungkiha has made he has not refuted or retracted so so that's refusion. So that is, uh, these are the elements to establish liability of partner in the ground of his token. <clears throat> so the liabilities in the stopel, if a partner is found out to be uh, a partner by stopel, then he becomes. Uh, the partnership is liable when all the partners consented to the representation. So the first case when there is a person who is a partner by Stoppel and he is uh, falsely claiming that he's a part of the partnership and the partners, all the partners has consented to the rep representation, then the partnership is liable. No? So many men tabo. This happens when a person goes to the bank and he is not a partner, uh, falsely represent himself as one of the partners of, let's say, partner company A and B. Then A and B, or the partners of company A and B, consented to his representation, which is false. Then the partnership will be liable. Number two, no partnership. There's no partnership. And all those represented consented. So this representation, by the way, is false, no? Because there's no partnership. And someone, somebody falsely or showing papers that there is a partnership, there's a contract signed, even though there is not. Then the person who represented or falsely represented himself, and those and all those who made representation will be liable proportionately or jointly. So in this case, not all partners of existing partnership consents to representation. Pariyara. <clears throat> Number three, stop it happens when there is no existing partnership and not all represented has consented <clears throat> to the false representation. And none of the partners in the existing partnership consented. So wala yung consent sa katong na, na maka, hmm? that there is a partnership. <clears throat> so in this case, only the person who represented himself shall be liable. And those who made consented to representation separately liable. So katong maka, one more ma, liable. <clears throat> Okay.